Today I'm going to take a look at the new Tamron 70-300 telephoto lens for the Nikon Z mount. So back in September, Tamron announced that they were going to offer Nikon Z mount support for their popular 70-300 telephoto lens. Now I've been a Tamron user for quite some time with one of my first ones being a 70-300mm lens on an old Nikon D3100. And that was always a great, reasonably priced option for that particular system. So it's sort of exciting news to hear they're going to be offering similar options for the Nikon camera systems, the new mirrorless Z mounts. And the 70 to 300 lens is a pretty popular lens for landscape photographers. It's fairly lightweight. It's pretty versatile. It sort of fills that range up in the zoom. So if you're sort of a wide angle person, you might have the 14 to 30 fill that mid-range to the 24 to 70, and then top it off with a 70 to 300 and keep your camera bag pretty light and still have quite the reach from 14 all the way up to 300 millimeters. So I was pretty excited to hear about it. I've been stalking some of the online sites, hoping for it to come into stock, and I, it didn't happen. But then I happened to check my local camera store and they had one in stock. So I went up, picked it up, and brought it home. And today we're gonna take a quick look at the lens and we'll go over some of its specs, we'll take it out in the field, play with it just a little bit, do a quick review on it, look at some of the images off of it, and just see how we think it performs. So specs-wise, it's a pretty reasonably sized lens. It measures about 5.8 inches in length and about 3 inches in diameter. It comes in at about 1.2 pounds, so it's pretty lightweight. It is a telescoping zoom, so again, what that means is here it is, this is a 70 millimeter, and when you zoom it out, the barrel extends beyond, so it does make it longer. However, it's still pretty lightweight, so even with it extended, it doesn't really seem to get off balance. That's something we'll play with when we're out in the field, but really, even though it extends, it doesn't really throw it that off, off center of gravity. It's a 67 millimeter filter thread size, so if you're putting in D filters, circular polarizers, or anything like that, you'll need a 67 millimeter filter size. Or, of course, you can always use step-up rings to, you know, 67 millimeter up to maybe something more common like an 82 millimeter or something like that. The lens doesn't have any image stabilization built into it. However, if you're on a Nikon mirrorless system like a Z62 or a Z72, you'll have in-body image stabilization to help sort of make up for that. So we'll see how big a deal that is over an extended period of time, but no image stabilization. And it is labeled as moisture resistant. So not so much that it is weatherproofed, it's not a weatherproof lens, but it's moisture resistant and that they say that it's got seals so that when you extend it out here and bring it back in, that it should help protect the, the workings of it. Aperture wise, it is a variable aperture lens. So it goes from F4.5 to F6.3 across that focal length. So, you know, at 70 millimeters, you're gonna be at F4.5. And then as you extend all the way out to 300 millimeters, you'll, you, that aperture will change to F6.3. We'll take a look at that in the field and see about where those aperture changes are happening. So I'm always curious about that with telephoto lenses and variable aperture lenses. I like to know, well, how long do I keep some of those apertures and what's that look like? So we'll play with that out in the field, see what that looks like. It does have Tamron's RX-D autofocus system in it. It's supposed to be a fast system able to keep up with Sony autofocuses, Nikon autofocuses. That's particularly important if you're going to be using this for any kind of like portraits, eye autofocus. However, since it's a landscape photography channel, you know, I, most autofocus systems can keep up with landscape photography, uh, but it does take advantage of their RX-D autofocus system. And as is typical to Tamron, it does come with a six-year warranty. Um, you know, be sure to read the fine print on that to see what all it covers, but sometimes it's nice to know that it's got a reasonably length warranty. So that's pretty much it for the specs of the lens. I'm anxious to see how this does. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to take this out in the field and we're going to play with it a little bit out there. We're going to play with its variable aperture, sort of see how long, where that aperture is changing as we go, play a little bit with some of the sharpness aspects of it, and then we'll bring those images back here, take a quick look at them, give them a quick review, and then let you know what my early thoughts are on this Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter lens. We'll see you out in the field. Okay, so this is the first stop of the Tamron 70 to 300. Um, this is a local metro park. I've filmed some other videos from here and it's got some meadows and pastures and it's got this creek, which is where I'm heading to now, some boulders. I was hoping for a little bit of color in the trees, but it looks like I'm still just a touch too early for that, but we'll see what we find down there and give this Tamron 70 to 300 uh, a chance and see what it does out there. Okay, 
Okay, so we made it down to what's called Riffle Run. I'm just gonna sort of check it out, see if we can find an interesting composition. Really, a lot of this is just about sort of playing with the 70 to 300, see what it's all about. Wanted to get out here as quick as I could to try it, so I came someplace close. Not a lot of leaves changing yet, but we'll see how that goes. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get set up and we'll go from there. Okay, so one of the things I'm curious about, because sometimes with these super telephotos and things like that, it's a variable aperture lens, so it's running, you know, from f4.5 to f6.3 across that range. It's not a solid, like, f4 lens through that whole focal length. And I know some lenses I've played with that are super telephotos, you lose that, you know, the f4, the f4.5 really quick, and you max out. So what I want to do first is, but we're going to start at 70 millimeters, and we're just going to start zoom in. And we're going to see at which stages the aperture changes, that variable aperture changes. Because that's something I'm always curious about, and that's one of the first things I want to test. So let's jump in here and give that a whirl. So the way we're going to test this is we're going to set the focal length. We're at 70, and I've got the aperture all the way down to 4.5, which is the, the fastest aperture this lens will do. So we're at 4.5. Now I'm going to rotate the barrel, and we're going to watch that aperture. It went to 4.8 at, oh, I'd probably say right around 80, 85 millimeter focal length. So, you know, not too bad. Let's go ahead and keep going. Let's try to get to 100. Okay, when we're at 100 millimeter focal length, we're still at 4.8 aperture. So that's still really good. So let's go ahead and keep going. We're going to move towards 135. So right here, probably about 100, 110 or so, we hit F5, F or 135 millimeter focal length, we're still at F5, so looking good. We're holding this variable aperture for quite a ways. 5.3, probably right around 140, 145 millimeters. We're approaching 200, probably around 175, 180 millimeters. We're sitting at about 5.6. And at 200 millimeter focal length on this 70 to 300, we're getting a 5.6 aperture. And we hit six, probably at around 2.10. We hit 6.3 at probably 265, 270. So that's not too bad for keep for a variable aperture lens at keeping it from 70 to 300. Okay, so that was just sort of working through the aperture where it was changing at the various focal lengths. With a variable aperture lens, I'm always curious about because, like I said, this is advertised from a aperture 4.5 to 6.3, and I'm always curious how quickly does it lose that 4.5 and when does it reach that 6.3. So one other thing I want to do is one of the advantages of the 70 to 300, it's a pretty lightweight lens, and it doesn't come with a tripod foot or anything like that. You get into the 100 to 400s, and you start getting a tripod feed, and some of the third-party lenses don't have ones that let you rotate, so it can make portrait composition is a little tough. So what I want to do is I want to take this, we're going to put it in a portrait mode, just see how stable everything feels. This up here on there like that. Get some form of composition here. Fixed filter. So here we are, we flipped the L bracket over to portrait mode and we're just going to take a quick shot. Again, nothing spectacular here. Watching the histogram. A little bit much sky in there. Let's recompose here to make that less of an issue. So just taking this at 70, obviously at 70 the barrel is not extended, so everything's pretty stable. It, like I said, there's not a lot of weight in this lens, which is sort of nice. You get those larger either 70 to 200 2.8s or 100 to 400s, and you start to get a lot of weight over front, especially if you don't have a tripod collar or a tripod foot or something like that on the lens. So let's go ahead and zoom this out to 300. And as you can see, you know, the barrel extends all the way out, but it's so lightweight, it really doesn't throw anything off balance. So one of the struggles I've had with the 100 to 400 I picked up is it's got an aftermarket tripod collar and switching to portrait mode just isn't easy. I have to sort of use the ball head to do it. And that puts things off kilter, which is sort of, you know, the reason I keep an L bracket so I can keep everything centered. So this, from that standpoint, it would be much easier with this lens to switch from a landscape mode to portrait mode, at least with the particular 100 to 400 I use. This is a nice thing about this lens, the fact it's native Z mount and lets me get to portrait mode very easily. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna test this thing out at 300 millimeters. There is a tree up here with a very intricate root structure. Okay, then I'm gonna zoom all the way in on that root structure and see what we get. There should be lots of detail to check out on the computer. Get my focus point right in there on the roots. So what I've done, I'm really just sort of looking for sharpness and image quality from this. Again, we're sort of moving quick, the sun's going down. I just really wanted to get out to 70 to 300 to play with it. Um, but I've got that root structure way off in the distance up that way. And I'm zoomed in all the way up to 300. I'm at F14, and I'm going to get my focus point right in there on those roots. I'm going to take the image. 
and we'll sort of see how this thing looks at all the way out at 300 millimeters. So I just played a little bit more of the couple compositions over here, different focal lengths. Again, really just sort of playing, trying to get some images to take back, get on the computer and just sort of look through, pixel peep on a little bit and see how things were. Um, really just, this is a quick look, early look at this new lens from Tamron to see what I think, not really out here capturing portfolio where the image is really more just playing with the lens, seeing what it can do and whether it's gonna be a regular carry in my bag. You said the sun is starting to go down. I'm gonna to start to head back out. If we don't see anything interesting on the way out, I am planning on doing another quick trip out tomorrow sometime and we'll play with the lens a little more and then I'll do my quick look at the Tamron 70 to 300 and see what my early thoughts are. Okay, so last night I was really playing around with compositions. I was using a polarizer and, you know, I had the whole setup going. I was also shooting in a 4x5 crop mode on the Nikon Z7 II and I realized I sort of wanted to shoot at a native 2x3 as well. So sort of what I'm going to do out here today is I'm going to shoot at a native 2x3. I'm not going to use any filters only because I don't want them getting away as when I sort of zoom in and pixel peep on these images when we get back to the office. I don't want to filter throwing questions into the image quality. So no filters, um, but we got this pond, a little bit of breeze, and we're gonna get great reflections. Um, but I got a little bit of the trees starting to turn more yellow than any great reds or oranges or anything like that. Um, but I think this is where I, uh, the area I wanna be, but I'm gonna head over this way and try to get, so I can shoot straight on. Right now I'm in an angle. I am gonna work my way around this little pond, over to the other side, get set up over here, and shoot into this. So what I'm gonna do is gonna shoot at 70 millimeters, probably shoot it around 200 millimeters and at 300. And then when we get these back in the office, we're gonna pixel peep on these images and see what they look like. Again, no filters, um, shooting in a normal two by three crop and we'll see what that turns out. Okay, so we've made it to the other side of the pond and what I've got, I've got this calm, relatively calm pond out here and I got a tree line across the pond and I'm sort of shooting straight into it and really what I'm here is more for the image quality test. I got lots of leaves, so there's gonna be lots of little detail to look at, textures to look at when I get these back home and check them out. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna see here, we're gonna start at 70 millimeters and we're gonna go ahead and get a 70 millimeter shot, get a couple other focal length shots here of pretty much the same thing, gonna keep the camera here. So we get like a 70, we'll end up at a 300 millimeter shot. And again, not looking for compositional greatness here. I'm looking for a clean image with no filter, full size crop, two by three, just to see what the image quality looks like. We'll be looking at it in the center of the image, which we'd expect to do pretty well, and look at the outer edges of the image. Now, I'm not really gonna change a whole bunch of apertures or anything like that. You know, we could play with apertures wide open, what does it look like wide open, but I'm approaching this from a landscape photographer's perspective, and really, most of the time I'm gonna shoot between F8 and like F16, and so we'll probably settle in somewhere in that aperture uh, to play with, and we'll see what we get. Let's just do an F14, and watch the histogram here. So we're 70 millimeters, I got my focus point over there in those trees. Again, no polarizing filter, because yesterday's shots, I did use a polarizing filter. And it was just a little bit more about playing with the lens. And you know, I got home and started thinking about it. I'm like, well, you know, I've got the polarizing filter on here. I was shooting in a four by five crop. And so I was like, today we're just gonna do no filter, two by three, and see what we get. So let's get this lined up. So real quick camera settings here, 70 millimeters, ISO 100, aperture of F14, and shutter speed to 1 20th. So we're just gonna take this picture, get my focus point. Boom, we've got that. So now I'm gonna zoom in, we're gonna hit like 135. Not really gonna recompose or anything. Take this shot, let's take it to 200. And finally all the way in. I didn't change my composition on that. And as I zoomed in, I really started get, hitting some ugly, not ugly, but there weren't as much of the interesting tree leaves. So I am gonna reposition here at 300 millimeters just so I have more leaves to play with here. Take the image. Again, this is a 300 millimeters. I just did recompose, so I have more leaves sitting at the corners of the edges. Some of this was gonna have water, and at the bottom, it would've been hard to see the detail, and that's really purely what these images are for. 
found this tree over this way, set it in a portrait mode. Tree has a little bit of scraggly color on it, but there's a nice little reflection. The water's a little calmer over there. So uh, we just set up for this shot. Like I said, we're zoomed in, oh, about 140, 145. Just snag the shot there, uh, just to sort of play with it in portrait mode and see what we get. Okay, so that's it. I got the test images I wanted. Took a portrait mode shot of this tree over here. And uh, we're gonna pack the stuff up. We're gonna take the camera home and we're gonna pull these images off onto the computer. And we're gonna take a look at a couple of them, take a look at the quality of them, you know, any little commentary. And we'll wrap this video up and let you know what I think about the Tamron 70 to 300. Okay, so we've brought the images back here into the office and we've pulled them off the camera. I've done some light edits on them and I'm just going to take a look at a few of the key select ones, the ones that I was going to use for just sort of gauging the image quality, see how sharp and crisp things were at the various focal lengths. So we're going to sort of zip through those, take a look at them, and then I'll give you my initial thoughts on the new Tamron 70-300 for the Nikon Z mount. So let's look at the computer. And what I've got here first is this is the main setup I had when we first started. I was shooting down the creek and this is where I did my aperture test to see as I worked through the focal lengths where that changed at. So this is the first image right over here off on the left. You can see the tree that I ended up zooming in on at 300 millimeter just to see what the sharpness was. So let's go ahead and bounce over to that image right there. So this is the image. It's a four by five crop. That's how the camera was set. Zoomed in at 300 millimeters and I put my focus point right around here in the tree. So let's zoom in to about 200% and just sort of take a look. Again, this is 300. This is the maximum focal length of that particular lens. And we can get to the leaf detail down here in the water. Get a nice little bark on the tree. Get some nice little texture in here. Here at the end of this log, you can see this. So yeah, taking it 300 millimeters, I would say the crispness is pretty good. Like I said, zoomed all the way out, set up on a tripod. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. This is the main image I wanted to show from that first night out with that Tamron 70 to 300. So this next set of images is from the second day where I went to that pond that had the fall leaves on it, sort of crossed the other side and sort of shot across at the, the trees on the far side of the pond. And I shot these at, let's see, the 70 millimeter mark, the 135 millimeter mark, 200 and 300. So let's start with a 70 millimeter mark. And here we are, we're gonna zoom in to 200% and we're gonna sort of zip up into the corners. Now I looked at this one earlier and this one, it's a little fuzzy up in the corner, but what I think happened was I was shooting somewhat of a slow shutter speed. I was like 1 15th of a second and there was a breeze out that day. So I think this is actually coming from the wind and the longer shutter speed, not the quality of the lens. So this test didn't quite go like I wanted because I think this is actually motion blur and not lens fuzziness. So if we dip over here lower into the tree line, the leaves start to look much better, much crisper uh, than they had before. And then you get into the middle of the trees, which were even more sheltered from the wind and they're nice and crisp. Again, this is the 70 millimeter shot. I did have a little bit of blur up there in the upper left corner, but I feel like that was actually more due to wind than it was lens. So really not the most precise test because of that breeze. I think that sort of messed that test up. So let's jump over here to the 133 zip up in the corner and here you can see at 133 and things are still fairly crisp up here in the side again i feel like i'm taking a little bit of a hit from the wind i probably should have maybe done more of a rock surface instead of trees or at the very least shot a faster shutter speed a little bit of an impact on these image quality tests nice and crisp over on this side though everything looks good jump in here to the 200 millimeter shot Again, things look nice. Uh, this is up in the corner. And because I'm getting more zoomed in, there's a ridge. And so this is more down behind the ridge. So the wind wouldn't affect it as much. And this is where we do start to see, you know, the image quality is pretty good in the corners here. Like nice crisp leaves, nice crisp branches at 200%, which is another reason why I really think those first image or two was more of a wind impact than an image quality impact from that perspective. And out here to 300 millimeters, let me show you the full size on this. So here, this is where I talked about on the video where really I only had the water in the corners and stuff. So I did recompose the 300 millimeter shot and sort of went just for the scene that had just trees. Again, this was a little lower, a little more sheltered from the wind, hit in at 200%. Nice crisp when you're pixel peeping like this at 200, I think it looks good. Same with over here in this corner, same over here in this corner, and pretty darn good down in that corner. Those were my tests of working through the 70 to 300. In fact, let's just sort of jump back real quick here to this first image. And this was shot at 70 millimeters when there's slightly less wind out. Jump up to 
200 and here the branches look pretty good you might say it's just a tiny bit soft up here this side's looking a little better but not too bad it definitely is sharper than that other 70 millimeter shot which again makes me think that the breeze and that slower shutter speed is what got me a little bit of trouble there so um, overall i think the image quality came out pretty good on these images through most of the focal lengths again this was a really quick test after several weeks months of playing with this lens more i think i have a better idea of how i feel about the image quality uh, but overall i thought it was pretty good Lens is a joy to use when out in the field. Overall impressions are after these two brief outings, one in the evening, one in an afternoon. The image quality from the lens seems good. It's a fairly compact length with being 5.8 inches. Uh, that fits in the pack nice and easy. A little smaller than a 100 to 400, a little bigger than a 24 to 200, but a nice reasonable size and the weight is spectacular. 1.2 pounds, super lightweight. Even when it extends, like I said, telescoping zoom, but when it extends, it still stays very balanced in my opinion, which helps when it's on a tripod and lets me get away with just using an L bracket on the camera for both portrait and landscape mode when I'm doing it. So like I said, impressed with this lens. I'm pretty sure it's gonna find a fairly regular spot in my bag. Obviously a lot more playing to do with it. You know, I'm out there really trying to put together real compositions instead of sort of playing with it quickly. So things I will be watching for as I continue using it out in the field is just its overall ruggedness. You know, it is a little plasticky. It doesn't quite have a full on rugged feel of like a 70 to 200, 2.8, or even really compared to my 100 to 400, it, if this one feels a little plasticky, but six year warranty on it and we'll see how it holds up to abuse. The other factor that I'll keep an eye on is it has moisture resistance, not weatherproof. So that'll be something interesting to see is how well that works. Probably wouldn't take this lens out in a full on downpour, but I do tend to shoot in drizzle or snow and things like that. So we'll see how that goes over time over the upcoming seasons and see how it holds up to that. And then finally, the last thing, which won't really be a fault of the lens, this is a 70 to 300, but figuring out how much I missed that 300 to 400 focal length. I could see myself carrying a 70 to 300 a lot because of its lightweight and nice versatility. It really helps complement my current range of lenses, but I'm gonna lose out on that 300 to 400 millimeter focal length. So I'm just sort of curious as time goes on how much I missed that and if that's an issue or not. So I'm happy to see Nikon Z mount support from Tamron. I've had good experience with Tamron lenses in the past, so excited to see some options for the Z mount. Out. that'll be great and as I get a chance to play with this lens more I will follow up with a more in-depth field review video of this lens after I've had time to use it more I've got a trip coming up to West Virginia where I'll be planning on taking this lens get some more time with it and look for a future video where I talk about more about how it's been out in the field and how I like it and if you found this video useful, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including behind the scenes, tips, tricks, mini gear reviews like these, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching.